So welcome back to VRC Smart Edu channel and we are here with the part 8 of the chapter principles of inheritance and variation. So already we have covered uh, 7 parts of this chapter and the links are provided in the description and also the link is popping up above you can go and check it out. Okay, so in today's video, it's going to be the continuation of your part 7 video. Okay, so part 7 we have discussed about the Mendelian's disorder. Uh, that is, we discussed about the color blindness and we also discussed about the hemophilia. So, in this video, we are going to discuss about the remaining diseases that is, it is going to be sickle cell anemia, phenylketonuria, and thalassemia. This is what we are going to discuss. And we are going to finally discuss about the chromosomal disorder. So with this, our chapter is going to be coming to the end. Okay. So this is going to be the last end of the chapter. Okay. Now quickly let us move on to the sickle cell anemia. It's coming under the Mendelian's disorder. Okay. What is all about sickle cell anemia? Okay. Actually, the sickle cell anemia is a disorder that occurs in RBC of the blood. What is RBC? RBC is a content present in the blood, right? So, in the blood we have RBC, we have WBC, we have platelets. Yes, so RBC is red in color, WBC is white in color. So, only they have given the name as red blood corpuscles and white blood corpuscles. So, RBC contains hemoglobin through which it is getting the red color. These are the basic things we already know. Now, in this disease, what happens is, you are having the RBC. Normal RBC will be in biconcave shape, something like this. So, normal RBC will be like this. Okay, like this. Now, what happens is, see, because of, because of the defect that is caused by the substitution of glutamic acid by vanillin. Uh, okay, you have the globulin chain. First, you have to try to understand it. You have the globulin chain. You have uh, hemoglobin is made up of the beta globulin chain. In an alpha globulin chain, beta globulin chain, two chains you have. In that, in beta globulin chain, suppose this is your globulin chain, you just imagine. Okay. Suppose this is your uh, globulin chain. Maybe this may be your beta globulin chain. In beta globulin chain, what happens? The sixth position of the beta globulin chain. In my one, two, three, we have no like that. We have sixth position. In the sixth position of the beta globulin chain, what happens? There will be the substitution of glutamic acid by valenin. Okay, valenin. Okay, will su substitute glutamic acid. Through which, what happens is, because of that, what happens is. Uh, when it undergoes the low oxygen tension, when it undergoes low oxygen tension, what happens? The shape of the RBC from the biconcave shape. So, from this shape, it will be converted to the spindle shape. Something like this. It will be converted to spindle shape. Okay. So, and it will uh, stick at one place. It cannot move free flow. It cannot move. So, it will... Uh, Stick at one place and causing the see, blockage. Causing the blockage. Okay. So, let us read this and let us try to understand it very clearly. It is a autosome linked recessive trait. This is very important. It is a recessive trait. It is an autosomal linked recessive trait. Okay. In which the mutant hemoglobin undergo. Mutant hemoglobin undergoes a polymerization under low oxygen tension. Okay, so under low oxygen, ten, uh, oxygen tension, what happens? The shape of the RBC will be changing from biconcave to the sickle-like structure. Okay, so this is caused by the substitution of glutamic acid. Glutamic acid is represented by GLU by Valenine. Valenine is substituting the glutamic acid during which in the sixth position of the this is very very important. Okay, sixth position of the beta globulin chain from hemoglobin molecule. So that sixth position is getting what replaced. 
by glutamic acid so that time what happens when it is going under the polymerization under low oxygen tension it is converting the biconcave shape this the biconcave shape uh, sorry biconvex convex biconvex shape into sickle shape sickle shape clear uh, biconvex shape into sickle shape clear uh, beta globulin chain the hemoglobin molecule okay the substitution of amino acid in the globulin protein results due to the single base pair substitution at c the substitution of this amino acid in the globulin protein in the globulin protein what happens amino acid will be getting segregated that is it will be substituted or it will be coming so that is because why it is coming it is because the single base it is because of the single base pair substitution and the sixth condon of beta globulin gene so the gene is getting converted from gag to gug initially it is gag it is getting converted to what gug clear initially gag is converting that is a gag and gug is nothing but it is a, a genetic code it is a genotype so that this genotype is getting converted to this genotype that you have to remember so you can able to see that in sickle cell anemia normal rbc cells are passing without any any difficulties they are passing in their own path right without any difficulties they are passing in their own path they are coming out so but what happens in the sickle cell anemia the blood is getting converted to sickle shape and it is causing the blockage restricting the flow of the blood okay clear that causes it to make into the sickle shape clear yes next moving on to phenylketonuria so here in phenylketonuria if you just see uh, clearly you can able to observe that phenylketonuria inborn error of metabolism okay so metabolism is nothing but whatever the chemical reaction that is taking place inside our body is called as metabolism so if any error occurs in the metabolism in the functioning of the body this phenylketonuria is caused it is a inborn error okay it is also inherited as autosomal recessive trait so autosomal recessive it's not dominant it is recessive trait it can be inherited from the parents also that is the carrier it is inherited from the carrier so it is not that it had uh, it must be present in parents okay so it is a autosomal recessive trait okay affected individual lacks enzyme the affected individual so it is a person who have phenylketonuria they will lack the enzyme see first you have this compound is very important to remember okay this compound is very important to remember amino acid phenyl aniline phenyl aniline okay this is very important and triose okay okay so now listen carefully i'll explain okay see here see uh, phenyl aniline actually actually what happens in our body is the amino acid is there so amino acid phenyl aniline will be converted into triosyl okay amino acid one minute amino acid phenyl aniline is converted to triosyl 
Okay, during this conversion, some enzyme will be helpful. See, if anything to be converted from one form to the another form, something intermediate should be there, right? So, like that, there will be one enzyme. That enzyme will convert this amino acid phenylalanine to triosine. But the person who have this phenylketonuria will not have that enzyme that is helping the amino acid phenylalanine to convert into triosine. So, the absence of the enzyme will not make the conversion to be occurring in 100% conversion cannot be occurred because there is an absence of that enzyme that is going to convert the amino acid phenylalanine to triosine. Clear? Yes. Phenylalanine, it will not be converted. Therefore, it will be accumulated in the body itself. So, therefore, uh, if anything is accumulated in the body, it will not be in the same form. It will be converted into another form. So, it will be converted to phenylpyruvic acid. So, since it is accumulated in the body, it is not converting into the another form. Therefore, this, the, as it is accumulating in the body, it is converted into phenylpyruvic acid and other derivatives. Okay. Accumulation of this phenylpyruvic acid. So, if phenylpyruvic acid is accumulating on our brain, if this phenylpyruvic acid is accumulating in the brain, causes mental retardation. Okay, so it will cause a mental retardation. That is, that is a person will not have that much mental maturity. So it will cause mental retardation, and it will also be excreted through the urine. Okay, why it is excreted through the urine? Because of its poor absorption of kidney. Kidney cannot absorb it. So, because of the poor absorption of kidney, what is happening? The phenylpyruvic acid is also released through the urine for this person who are having phenylketonuria. And it, it is also, uh, if it is accumulating in the brain, it will also cause mental retardation. Clear? And other causes, that is mental retardation or brain damage. If the condition is more severe, it can cause the brain damage. And it will also cause some skin diseases can also be caused. Intellectual disability. That is nothing but the mental retardation. It comes under intellectual disability also. That is they can't think that much. They can't answer that much. The mental uh, power of them will be low compared to the other people. Clear mental uh, intellectual disability will be there. They will not be so much intelligent. Okay. So these are the things. I'm coming to the next disease called thalassemia. Okay, this is very important. Listen carefully. So, uh, already we studied about the alpha globulin chain and beta globulin chain in our sequence cell anemia. We have studied about beta globulin chain. Now, here, listen carefully. See, thalassemia. It's a, it is also an uh, Mendelian's disorder. It is a autosome linked recessive disease this is very important okay so for all the diseases i have mentioned whether it is autosome or whether it is sex linked okay or it is recessive or dominant you have to be careful with all these four informations because these four informations are very very important clear now next mutation in the gene hpai that is HPA1, this is HPA1 and HPA2 present on the chromosome 16. Actually, the mutation in the gene, so mutation in the gene, the genetic code is given HPA1, HPA1 and HPA2. This is nothing but these are the genetic code, okay, present on the chromosome number 16. In the chromosome number 16 these codes are present okay so in chromosome number 16 these codes are present formation of abnormal hemoglobin molecule resulting in anemia so abnormal hemoglobin molecule it's not a normal hemoglobin molecule a different form of hemoglobin molecule will be causing the anemia offsprings may get the disease when both the parents are a carrier so, this disease can be caused. So, if the thalassemia to be caused to an offspring, actually it is a recessive disease. 
I told if the disease is going to be recessive, it's not seen in parents, but it's seen in offspring. As well as the one more information is, okay, parent will be surely a carrier. Okay, so for example, mother will be a carrier and father will be a carrier. If both are carrier, then only the offspring can have this disease. If the offspring is male or female, it's autosomal. So there is no particular uh, thing is followed. So uh, you can have the affected individual when both the father and mother are carrier. Clear? Heterozygotes. Okay, they should be heterozygous. That means both the allelic pair should be different. Okay, so if it is caused in alpha globulin chain. So I, I already I told in the hemoglobin there are two chains. I told alpha globulin chain and beta globulin chain. If it is caused in alpha globulin chain, if this deficiency is caused in alpha globulin chain, then it is called as alpha thalassemia. If it is going to be caused in the beta globulin chain, then it is called as beta thalassemia. Clear? That should be very, uh, very much. You should be very much careful with that. So this is the carrier. So both the parents, this is uh, this is hierarchy showing parents. Both the parents are carrier, and offspring will surely have when both the parents are carrier. Clear? Yes. Okay, so now we are going for chromosomal disorders. So we have completed the Mendelian's disorder, moving on to chromosomal disorder. See, in chromosomal disorder, when we talk about the chromosomal disorder, okay, uh, just look here. Talk about the chromosomal disorder. So it's nothing but, see, the genetic disorder. Okay, it is also a genetic disorder. Chromosomal disorder is also uh, coming under the genetic disorder that are caused due to the absence or excess or abnormal arrangement or one or more chromosome. So still now we talked about the gene, the rearrangement of DNA, the rearrangement of uh, additional deletion of DNA, all these things we studied about mutation and the causes of mutation leading to Mendelian's disorder, all these things we studied. Now, chromosomal disorder means a disorder that is caused by chromosome. It's called as chromosome, chromosomal disorder. So, if the chromosome is going to be absent or if the chromosome is going to be excess in number or abnormal arrangement of chromosome, it's called as chromosomal disorder. Usually, we have studied that the Mendelian's disorder are heritable. That is, you can get it from the parents. So, we call it as sex-linked disorders, etc. But these chromosomal disorders are non-heritable. This word is very, very important. Chromosomal disorders are non-heritable. They will not be passing from one generation to the another generation. If any error caused in the copying of DNA, at that time only chromosomal disorders will be caused. Clear? So, it is due to the... Uh, see. Failure of segregation of chromatids during the cell division cycle results in gain or loss of chromosomes. Okay, so failure of segregation of chromatids. So when chromatids are not segregating during the cell division, you know how the cell will divide. We have different phases of cell division, right? At the time when chromatids, there will be a failure. If suppose there is a failure of segregation of chromatids during the cell division, what happens means gain or loss of chromosome will take place. Either gain of chromosome will be taking place or loss of chromosome will take place. This situation is called as aneuploidy. This word you have to remember. Aneuploidy. And the meaning for this word is also very very important. That is nothing but you have to write what is aneuploidy. You have to write the failure of segregation of chromatids during cell division. Cycle results in gain or loss of chromosomes that is called as aneuploidy. Okay, example, Down syndrome, Turner syndrome. So, let us see about all these syndromes in the later slides. So, okay. So, this is aneuploidy. Then what is polyploidy? Polyploidy. This is also an important word. You have to remember this. This is the phenomenon of 
failure of cytokinesis. Okay, cytokinesis is nothing but the suppression of cytoplasm. Okay, after telophase stage of cell division, you know the different phases of cell division, you know, in that telophase stage of cell division, the failure of cytokinesis, if it is going to be taking place, then it is called as polyploidy. It results in an increase in the whole set of chromosomes. So, chromosomes will get increased in an organism. So, this polyploidy condition is often seen in plants. So, remember the condition that is seen in plants is going to be polyploidy and aniploidy is seen in humans or it can also see in animals, some animals, okay. Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, these are seen in the human beings, clear? Okay. Now, let's quickly dive on and move to the next concept. So now, I'm moving on to Down syndrome. So what is Down syndrome? Simply, if I have to tell about the Down syndrome, I can say that the Down syndrome is nothing but the additional copy of chromosome number 21. So you all know that if, a, uh, if there are 23 in human beings, normally how many? 23 pairs of chromosomes. Normally. That is 23 pairs of chromosome. That means 46 chromosomes. So 46 chromosome will occur only in pairs. So you will occur only in pairs. So therefore you have 23 number of uh, 23 pairs of chromosomes you know. So this 23 pairs of chromosomes will be something like this. If this is your first chromosome, the pair of chromosome will be there. No, this, this will be. These both will be the pair of chromosome. Next pair. Next pair. So this is the first pair, this is the second pair, like this you have so many number of pairs. So there is 23 pairs of chromosomes, you are having 46 chromosomes. But here what is going to happen means, the 21st pair is there, no, 21st pair. If this is going to be your 21st pair, etc, etc, 21st pair. Here, already two chromosomes are there. One more additional copy will be present in this 21st chromosome. One more chromosome will be present. This three chromosomes will be present in the 21st pair. Okay, additional copy of chromosome number 21. So, chromosome number 21 will have an additional copy. You can able to see that here 2, here 2, here 2, everywhere 2 is present. But in the 21st in 21st chromosome alone, you can able to see that there are 3 chromosomes are present, 21st pair. So, 3 chromosomes are present, therefore it is an additional copy of chromosome number 21. Okay, and if you just look after here, normally 46 chromosome, here additionally 1 chromosome is present. So, how many chromosomes will be present here? 47 chromosomes will be present in this case, that is 2n plus 1. Normally, a, a haploid or that is a diploid human uh, beings will have 2n number of chromosomes. So that means 2n number of chromosomes we have. But here what is happening? One more chromosome is extra. So 2n plus 1 is the uh, karyotype. 2n plus 1 is the karyotype. Okay. Next. Clinical feature. Partially open mouth with furrowed tongue. So, their mouth will be partially open. They can't close their mouth. And they also have a furrowed tongue. A deep uh, tongue they will be having. They will be having mental retardation. That means they will not be mentally strong enough. And they have the small round head. Broad palm with palm crease. Okay. So, these are the clinical features of the person who is having the Down syndrome. Next, moving on to Klinefelter syndrome. Okay, and Klein filter syndrome is also 2n plus 1. But what is the difference? Okay, in Klein filter syndrome. So, Klein filter syndrome occurs usually in male. Occurs usually, that means it occurs in males. You can take it occurs in males. Okay, so you just see here what will be the 23rd pair of chromosome in case of male and in case of female. Tell me. What will be the 23rd pair? You will all say that the 23rd pair will be the sex chromosome. So, for female it will be X and X. 
for male it will be x and y it is usual for normal organism it is usual but the person that who is going to have this clean filter syndrome that is the males those who are going to have this clean filter syndrome will have an additional one x chromosome that means they have x chromosome x chromosome and y chromosome so they have two x chromosomes and one y chromosome can i able to see here first all the uh, chromosomes there are only two chromosomes are present in all the pairs right so but here you can able to see two x chromosomes are present and one y chromosome is present that means one x chromosome is additionally present here one x chromosome is additionally present here so it occurs in the male clear which is also called as 2n plus 1 because already it is there 2 so plus 1 2n plus 1 so here also you have 47 number of chromosomes the clinical features overall masculine development that is overall male development will be there total body overall male development will be there sterile male with small testes so this male cannot produce they are sterile in nature okay they cannot reproduce their egg ones they are sterile in nature they have small testes may have some breast development okay then because two x is present two x chromosome is present so you can able to see some female characters also in this person tall and long limbs mental deficiency so these people will also have mental deficiency so they cannot have that much good strength enough mental power clear this is all about the clean filter syndrome now moving on to the next so next we are going to deal with the turner syndrome so what is the difference between clean filter syndrome and turner syndrome a very very clean uh, very interesting difference Uh, but very very simple difference to say. So what is the difference is? See in Turner syndrome, it is two n minus one y, and also there in the clean filter syndrome, I told it occurs in male, right? In clean filter syndrome, I told it occurs in male, but in Turner syndrome, it occurs in female. Turner syndrome occurs in female. Just two difference, you know. Just two difference. First, you remember, two n minus one means what is two n? Two n is a normal diploid organism. That means two n plus one means I told one more chromosome is going to be added, so you are going to have forty seven number of chromosome. But here two n minus one, so one more chromosome is going to be reducted. That means here you are going to have only forty five number of chromosome. Clear. That means one X chromosome will be absent in female. That is the normal female chromosome. Sex chromosome will be X X will be the normal female chromosome, right? But here in this case, one of the X chromosome will not be present. Okay, so the female will have only one X chromosome. Okay. So absence of one X chromosome in female, so it's it's going to be two n minus one. That is, it's going to have forty five number of chromosomes. So first, now we have to understand the clinical feature. What is the clinical feature? First one is female with retarded sexual development. That is, the female will not have any sexual overall sexual development or secondary sexual characters will not be seen in the female. Okay, and Usually sterile, so and ovaries are rudimentary, so usually they are sterile in nature. That means they cannot produce their egg ones, and they their ovaries also rudimentary. They will not be uh, producing the eggs, right? So their ovaries are rudimentary and they are sterile in nature. That is, they can't produce their egg ones. Okay, St short stature, they are short. Cardiovascular abnormalities, so they will have some. Heart problems, cardiovascular abnormalities can be seen, and they will also have hearing impairment. Okay, some problem in hearing. Okay, 
so the clinical features of them is very important to note all the three syndromes the clinical features are important and uh, it is 2n plus 1 or 2n minus 1 that is important to whom it will be caused to male or female to anybody it can be caused that can be um, then you have to remember how many number of chromosomes will be present in these condition what is the original number of chromosome that is present in normal human beings how many pairs all these things should be you have to be clear clear okay so that's all thank you so much for watching this video so i hope you understood all these things so all the videos of this chapter is being completed the complete chapter is uh, made as in video and the link is provided in the description if you want to watch all the videos you can watch that okay so that's all. I'll be coming up with the next lesson in the next video. Thank you.